Hi, we're back. Revan's eating ham sandwiches. I'm watching Call of Duty. Clayster's on your screen, and he's got that rim rim. Mm. How good is that hamage? It's a, it's pretty good. Not gonna lie, better than the pepperoni on the pizza. Yeah, you have never had pepperoni before that was tonight. My first time. And Italian sausage. Yeah, that was my first time. And too. prosciutto. Yeah, that was my first. And time. tomato sauce and cheese. Yeah, that was my uh, first time. No, you've had pizza. Yeah, I've had pizza. You've before. had pizza. All right. But you said there were like three different types of cheeses. So I don't know. Yeah, they had like lots of Romano cheese, a little uh, Parmesan cheese, and sniper in the window. Clay, deal with that. All right, so let's talk about freight search and destroy here. So, same map, totally different game mode. Don't be confused by the three arrows, ladies and yep. gents. As you can clearly see, the A bomb site is where the offense want to push, but it's pretty tough to take. Usually, you'll see defenders up top in the three story, and they could look through the grating all the way up top on the building and get a clear line of sight on that A bomb site too. Offense, you can't go direct for the bomb plant like you can on other maps like Warhawk. You absolutely have to pick up a couple of kills on the map before you go for a plant. And Clay putting away his Remington. There it comes back out again. I like his positioning here. Climbed from that top truck, got on top of the building. Now he's going to be working with Teep, who's going to plant the bomb. Who is the last remaining member of Optic Gaming? It's going to be Mr. Nate Shot. Nate oh. comes in, Excellent and Clay will deal with it. 1-0 start here for Complexity. Yeah, I'm actually surprised Nate. Well, obviously he heard TP going for a plant, but... Uh, you can kind of spray through that tin fence. Unlike in other Call of Duties, Switching the bomb side. site, it's kind of like spaced out. So you can shoot through all of it. So if he just kind of goes through the tin fence, sprays left and right. You know, he could have potentially got that kill on the teep without uh, exposing too much of his body. So we're going to watch both teams for two rounds at a time. This one is going to be complexity on defense. And teep's got this MTAR out. Let's see where he goes with it. All right. So... Usually the defensive setup you'll see is one player watching the the gate, one mid alley, one top warehouse, and then one all the way top three story. But TP is going to be a bit aggressive as Krim gets first blood onto Nade Shot. So already in the round, Complexity with the man advantage. And you saw him stop there for a moment. That's because he was switching his class, took off that marathon, and let's see what he can do now that he's in the middle. Clayster working with him, and Clay's going for the high ground here inside the optic base. Yep, in the white warehouse, and he's going to get picked off by Big Timer. Underground, it's still clear. Where's the other member? So, yeah, this is where you're going to see. Oh, him. wow. Dirty Eggs picks up the headshot okay. and a second. I hope we see it one more time from Eggs' perspective. Here it is. It's actually TP with the MTAR. He got here in the first five seconds and stayed there until this kill. Very patient play. And a solid execution, Aix being the hero in that one with the two-piece. So I think Teep, with his class change, he switched out Marathon for Blast Shield, if I'm not mistaken, which is a pretty good pick, if I do say so myself. But Is it good enough to warrant stopping and switching your class? Yeah, without a doubt. So the whole point, you've seen this in past Call of Duties as well, where players would start the round out with a fast SMG class, get as far up as the map as they felt comfortable with, and switch their class within the first 15 seconds to... You know, what they really want to use in that position on the map. So, keep continuing that and goes. Jcap on your screen for the moment as we switch over to Optic. Optic also on defense now. And Jcap sticks with that Remington while Big Timer goes exactly where Clayster was last round. Right outside that white warehouse. And he's going to be looking across, more focused on any players trying to move over from the cargo area. Uh, I may have just spotted one over towards the left, but definitely right that's an easy kill on the eggs as yeah i think he did spot closer a bit earlier but big time he's the last one alive one on two going up against clay and Krim. and well he sees the underground door open well it's fine one player takes out hey clay uh-oh uh big t he had a three on one earlier will this be a second taking it nice and slow and he's gonna yep. find him and wow big timer <laughs> I was told this man is a legend in previous Call of Duties. I come into Black Ops 2 after not watching much Call of Duty at all. I come from the Halo world. And Big T seemed to be just another one of the guys. He was definitely a top player, but not super MVP caliber. In this game, though, in the limited amount of games that I've seen, he's definitely been shining the brightest on Optic Gaming. I mean, he's had... Even on Octane, a uh, blitz. You know, even though they lost, he had so many kills. Domination as well. And that search on Sovereign, you saw him clutch out multiple rounds for his team. And right now, he's on top 5-2. and two. As uh, Complexity, they currently have the lead. It's only by one round. So, Optic, now it's going to be their turn on offense. And, of course, we have to watch Big Timer. 
Big T with the Vector. And he's going to get his fourth kill in a row. Nice little spree action. Finally cleaned up by Aches. And we're going to switch over to J-Cap, who with that Remington is inside this white warehouse. He's just trying to peek all windows to find out where this complexity defensive setup is. Yeah, 100%. There's always going to be someone for defense up top in that third story house. And I think the underground doors were just open. So J-Cap backing up. Uh, we'll close them immediately, but always you want to look at that top third story railing as you can look right through the grating Got a clear line of sight on that a bomb site got to clear that before you go for the plan more shots going into Jcap as he has one teammate left alive I believe it's a one on two at the moment if not a one on three Nate shot is his teammate up up against crim six and ache so two on two scenario here for optic Yeah, grenade doesn't connect but uh, you could kind of always make the assumption that someone's going to be there. Bomb still dropped around the map. j going to be the one to pick that up. Nate's still trying to work and pick to give Optic the man advantage, and he's so focused on his top three star while j taking fire from the left side warehouses, and time running out. Takes five to plant, and j gets taken uh -oh. out. That might be the round. Nate doesn't have the gun he wants. P226, not so good at that range, and he is going to be picked off from above. 3-1 complexity. And what do you think about these Optic guys pulling out the Sniper? It seems the most damage so far has all been done with the assault rifles here on Freight. Well, Sniper rifles are so important in Search and Destroy. You saw that in Black Ops 2. At times you saw teams using three Snipers, but it was mainly with Overkill. Uh, Nate deciding not to use Overkill here on Freight. Uh, you know, it, it could definitely work out. There are a lot of angles you could work, but it all comes down to if you're able to make the picks or not. I don't believe Nate was able to pick up one with the Sniper that, that round, so not working out in uh, round four, but we're moving to round five and we're switching to complexity. Shout out to the ladies in my life, Linda Puckett and Molly Rammel who are watching the stream. Ladies, don't you have something better to do? I didn't think so. Call of Duty Ghost is amazing. 3-1 is your score after four rounds. Complexity three away. Optic, they need to win five rounds before Cole gets to three. And I love this positioning from Krim6 to watch that top roof. Yeah, just waiting for someone to peek out. Uh, I might have just spotted some movement, but Taking it nice and steady. You got Clayster watching underground working with Teep. They're able to take out Big Timer, which is a big kill, as we've seen Big Timer uh, just get a one on two clutch. So taking him out of the equation, Complexity are going to be feeling pretty comfortable. Another nade goes up top. That one doesn't connect for Aix. Looking down low before he jumps through the train. And man, Freight, it's a very interesting map with the layout. It can play very fast and very slow. And I like the different routes he can take as you see Eggs coming on the flank behind the player in the three-story. That's kind of the one trick up uh, the sleeve that the offense have on this map, being able to negate that whole middle alley mm -hmm. and get right into that three-story. You saw him, I believe he caught Scumpy off guard there. And here you see Teep in the round and he kill cam complexity. Looking very good here in Search and Destroy. I think they're up 4-1 to one in round count. What do you call that building? Uh, I just call it like uh, the left side warehouse or the Blitz warehouse. That's where it is. Blitz warehouse? All right. Complexity, they have a few names. Yeah. They got a yellow, yellow. or a green, I believe they call that. Green? Right. Green warehouse. So going off colors like the Halo guys do, I definitely think uh, Halo people are much more efficient with their call outs than COD people. Yes. The COD guys are lazy. Yeah. Too many words. All right, we're on board with Aix. Especially if you watch Embos' call out video, I just died laughing. <laughs> No, no worries, Embos. Look at that shot from Aix as he's going to be able to climb this ladder like a boss. And taking position top third story. Action going down so early on. Two for two trade. As Aix, in the end, you know, he's saying, well, what just happened? I didn't see anything when I was climbing up. WTF, guys. Where'd all this action go down? Now he's paranoid. He's like, okay, I heard it. I know there's people around me somewhere. Yeah, so even trades like go? that are always going to favor the offense because now the defense have more positions to watch with less players. So they're more spread out on the map. And it... It makes it a lot more easier for the offense to try to sneak around and get behind enemy lines. So who's up with Aix right now? Is he the last man standing? Nah, him and Teep. Teep. Teep in action, it sounds like. His shots are going down in the middle of the map. Teepy backing up wisely. And he does have Aix watching from above. Teepy, he's going to be the guy down low worried about the A-bomb. And either way, it looks like Optic Gaming, 30 seconds left in this round. Yeah, this is the line of sight I was talking about, by the way. Egg's cooking that just a little too long there. But he's going to peek out. Spots one down low. No one on the A site. Are Optic going B here? They definitely have time to. Aix looks like he's a, a bit confused right now, as you'll always see the offense go A, but they know Aix loves to sit up top in that three-story building. And there you go. Bomb goes down at B. 
Let's see who challenges inside this warehouse. The answer is no one for the moment. And now Aix has got to be so worried. There's so many nooks yeah. and crannies to hide in over here. He's going to charge straight into the bomb, and that's exactly where Optic is going to be staring. Easy kill in the two-on-one. Yeah, you said it perfectly. So many spots to watch. I mean, look where this V-bomb site is located. And then there's so much area to work with in this back lumberyard. You could even be at the underground stairs watching the cross shooting through the fence. So uh, as soon as that bomb goes down, Aix was in a, a rough spot. All right, complexity, they're up. Optic fighting back as we jump on board with them again. Can we watch Scumpy this round? Sure thing. The man is two and five, but I feel like this is his two-piece round. Well, let's see if he's using overkill again. He's not. Very slow with that Remington. As you can see, Nade Shot's sprinting out ahead of him. All right, so it looks like it's Scumpy's job to watch this third story warehouse. Not choosing to climb with the ladder, and there you go, Sniper. Now being used by Nate, gets the first ball in the clayster, and that just puts his team in, in a much better position. Now that they have man advantage, complexity, they're going to be a bit more worried to push up on the map. Without a doubt, they're going to have to make at least two picks before they go for the plant. Scump up in the window. Shots going down outside on the left. Scumpy's going to be very paranoid watching below him. And he will find oh. a player in the white warehouse. He does get picked. Nate shot with a line of sight on a player down low. Wasn't able to pull the trigger as he's zooming out. And now you can see those bullets coming through the wall. Oh, He's going to wow. get riddled and picked off by Crim6. Great awareness by Crim. Wow. I think he just picked up that, Is that the second Krim kill show? as well. Yeah. Three kills in that round. Let's take a look at this in the round and kill cam. You're going to see two of them as he gets Nate shot through the wall. You saw the end there and peeks out. Unbelievable shots from Crim. Man. I can never see people on the 360 version of Ghost. Krim, no problem with it. Identified and executed one round away is complexity from going up 3-1 in our series. 4-1? I can't even do that. I math think 4-1. 4-1 yeah. now, yeah. It's 3-1 currently. And we can see the score in this one, 2-5. Optic Gaming needing to win four straight complexity. They just need this last round. Yeah, and you see the scoreboard here. Everybody from complexity putting in work, really. Nobody kind of carrying the team. Nate with the sniper spots one early on. Looking for the pick now on top of the train, but he's just going to allow his teammate to kind of clean that one up. But, you know, Ooh. two quick kills for complexity. It's now Nate just trying to get one, misses the snipe. Yeah, and TP's going to stay alive over on that far side of the map. He loves it. Spot oh. takes up top, and man, no pick there. It looked like it. Yes, it. he did score it. Okay, so unfortunately, after the snipe, though, shots coming in from everywhere as three members were still left in this final kill cam belongs to Krim6 again at range with the Remington. No recoil on that bad boy as we are going to see Cole extend their lead. Yeah, it's a little weird, you know, saying the Remington at long range because in Black Ops 2 is a shotgun. <laughs> right. Now it's an assault rifle, so it's like, ah. Got a long range kill with a shotgun. But the Remington Krim6 guy is a very talented person. Makes a whole lot of guns. Krim6 finishing 8-3 and three on top for his team. Complexity now lead the series four maps to one and are one away from closing it out. Guess who had the most kills for Optic Gaming? Uh, big Timer? Yep, Big Timer, 7-7, seven and seven, staying even at the top of the leaderboard for OG. Also, uh, Aix, 7-4 and four in that one. Pretty good games for both Krim and Aix, and TP also 7-3. and three. So Complexity, they really just don't struggle yeah. on Frey SND. That is the moral of the story. We're going to commercial break. When we come back, we got some more blitz coming up for you right here on MLG.TV.